How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and get this last tower done uh, so I'm going to do the mission called uh, Water Boom 2 and uh, yeah I just wanted to kind of and then I've finally got all four of them done I've got the two proper water towers fixed up on the map I can see the situation with uh, being able to transfer water between one and two and then also three and four separately um, yeah so for this one I've, I need a cabin is one of the things so I'm going to have to drive to that warehouse get medium planks and metal beams and take it there to build a cabin then kind of go back this way cut across the middle of the map I'm going to scavenge uh, metal rolls and metal beams from uh, that factory warehouse thing whatever it is that I uh, put out with some water the other day and then yeah down to sort of the bottom left hand corner really for the uh, the second tower and for this one I don't know, perhaps slight regrets in the end, but uh, I decided to go and try this though, the new, well not the new, sorry, the Derry um, 4520, it's got a new-ish engine, and it helps, but still not enough. I mean, for example, just going along there in front of the garage, I think I was in fifth gear, and I tapped L1 and it went down to fourth, and that's on flat ground, with an empty trailer. Um, yeah, and this new improved engine, which I think brings it up to it might be A on the rating, but it's still a good, I think, three or four notches off the top. What I think they should do, I'm really hoping they do, but I won't hold my breath for it, is that new Derry Special 15C they've added, that has its own engine that apparently a few people have said is now like the new strongest engine in the game. It's even stronger than uh, the biggest Western star engine yeah the twin steer I believe that had the strongest engine before that um, there's the KZ GT engine in this game as well which I know that's pretty good but I think that's only on vehicles that you get like the advanced special gearbox so I don't know if we've really had a chance to try that in the uh, the high range configuration um, yeah long story short though I still think this truck is pretty depressingly weak really it's uh, again it was supposed to be like the best truck in the game. See there, it just finally cut out. I think I was only in 7th out of 8th, but it just dropped into first gear, which, yeah, the fact that I'm going along a, a road, it's not really what you want to be happening. And, uh, yeah, like I say, an empty trailer. Got a goddamn horse in me, but he's weightless unless he needs to. Got him colour-coded, though. Went for some kind of army spec. I don't think you have a army camouflage options for this dairy. You do on the other one, although one of them's like quite a colourful greeny, bluey and white. Kind of reminds me of the uh, French tanks in World of Tanks Blitz. You can paint them a similar colour. Um, yeah, the loaf. He hasn't even got any army colours either. It's been ripped off. Still need more colours on the loaf. Apologies, there seems to be a few glitches in this one. Must be my memory. My PlayStation yet again. See now, it's even like, just, I don't know, this truck is a little bit on the frustrating side. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, attempted a live stream yesterday, or I suppose twice in the end. Um, yeah, apologies to everyone who kind of showed up on that and it just ends up blue screening me and uh, automatically ending the live stream. I tried to give it a go just because, obviously I've been saying for the last month that it's blue screening, which it is, that kind of demonstrated it as well, but you know what I mean, after... After a while, I kind of wanted to just like sod it. Let's attempt it, risk it, see what happens. Um, it was also because the clocks changed, so it was going to be a bit of an awkward time where I did it. Started it half an hour later than normal, but that's obviously half an hour earlier than normal had the clocks not gone back. And yeah, for various people around the world, depending whether your clocks have already gone forward, backwards, it's uh, it just messes all the time up anyway, so it seemed like a good time to attempt to live stream, get that out of the way. Yeah, sadly it blue screened me twice. Um, it lasted a little bit longer than about a month ago when I tried the live stream. I think it was ending like every five minutes. I've turned some mods off and stuff and it yeah, seemed to last a little bit longer. I think it managed 15-20 minutes but it's obviously still not really enough for a, a live stream. Unfortunately, I still don't know what the bloody hell's going on with it but yeah, like I said, other people have said the same so there must be a just it's got to be snow runners and they need to do some kind of patch like say on my normal playthrough touchwood it's uh, been ticking along fine funnily enough I've noticed though the same 
you get like a little frame stutter when the uh, the saving cogs appear on the right. But I've had a few going on when it's not even the uh, like saving. It just you get a little stutter every now and then, and it's normally on that stutter where it blue screens me on my mod playthrough. But on this one so far, it hasn't. It's like it thinks about it, but doesn't quite go there. Yeah, you can see this truck climbing up here. I've gone into low range in the end, but yeah, there's really. I mean, this thing, they've broken the gearboxes more recently, but this thing never really suited high range that much to begin with. I remember using it back in the day, and it's one of them. I'd rather use high range if I can over off road, just, yeah, mainly because of the uh, speed in the high gear, but this truck just really isn't suited to it. I don't know. There's other eight wheeled vehicles in this game, plenty of others that still have plenty of power going to them. This almost feels like. Um, yeah, particularly those three axles at the back. They just kind of bleed power. Some of them are sort of taking power, but not really doing a hell of a lot with it. And it just seems to, like, drain the available power. And, the, yeah, this thing just throws in the towel pretty damn easily. See there? <laughs> it's dropping down gear again. It's driving me mad. This vehicle gives me the sort of feeling that... I don't know. I suppose if you smoke you're addicted to nicotine and you've not had one for a while it's kind of that feeling <laughs> it makes you feel like you're uh, missing out on something I don't know what it is it gives you that stressful feeling uh, yeah get that stuff dropped off like I say one lot of medium planks one lot of metal beams cash it in build a cabin get that and uh, yeah thankfully for this mission this wires end up being able to bring the dairy because it's a uh, now need cabin metal beams and metal rolls, so five slots of cargo. If it was six, I would have had to have got a different vehicle, got a sideboard, towed a ramped flatbed with me. And then, yeah, now kind of going from the top right of the map, really, to the bottom left. Um, that warehouse I just went to to grab the materials to build this cabin, I could go back there, really. I have got, uh, there is one lot of metal rolls still in there, and probably three lots of metal beams now. <laughs> I still have to go the, go the normal way around this roundabout. Um, yeah, I could have grabbed them from there, but to be honest, I was kind of curious, curious as well to see the little animation when you uh, take the materials from these warehouses in the burned forest section. It, yeah, in theory, deletes them like it did, uh, I don't know, back on Wisconsin on Phase 3. There was like wooden frame house things that you could sort of scavenge the wood off that. Which, yeah, it's sort of, I don't mind too much, but like I say, the game ends up getting confused on what materials are where, and uh, I've noticed now with various different missions and contracts, I go to click, like, an item, and it just, it either won't tell me where it is on the map, or it'll tell me it's at a warehouse that hasn't got those particular supplies left, so it's getting a little bit more faffing around to try and figure out what the game wants me to do, where it wants me to get what from. It's the same as well with that mission where I've got a pick up eight lots of gold and it says take them to the railway station but then when you click on the gold it doesn't tell you where to get them from I'm pretty sure it's gonna be that mine in the bottom left of the map really where uh, we have to collect the rail tracks from but yeah as of yet it's not telling me they're there or <laughs> well, they're not appearing or anything yeah this thing's crawling up this hill I think I've just gone past yeah, the warehouse where I could have got the bits from, but like I say, I, I want to see what happens when I scavenge scavenge uh, one of these warehouses. You see what I mean? There's just not enough guts to it. This is in auto, in a high range gearbox. It's driving more like, I may as well at this point really go into low range with the diffs on, because it's only going about that fast anyway. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be pretty interesting if they put the biggest engine in that um, new Derry 15C thing we've got. I think this one would finally be like S plus on the power rating. Because I've driven um, two good examples of this in mods is Fox's uh, version of this Derry. That's been out for a good little while and that was a hell of a lot of fun. I got that, I think it was back on phase four and I just spent <laughs> about ten hours flying around Erska River doing nothing in particular, just a Derry and a loaf enjoying me time. Um, yeah, and then more recently AGL's made a version of this Derry as well, and uh, both of them, like, obviously you can dial the power up 
and yeah they both like nailed this truck to where it feels decent feels like it's uh, nice to drive feels how it should in this game really considering it was supposed to be like the uh, the top vehicle in the game really it's even back there through that water I think as soon as you touch the water it just kind of gave up on trying to keep pulling through there high gear if you yeah going down all the wind behind you or along a, uh, a tarmac road you're kind of alright other than that it really doesn't last two seconds before it gives up that's one of the main reasons I wanted to bring this truck out was um when I fixed water boom one the other day that I did that with the uh, the first dairy the dairy three one nine four or something like that and uh, yeah I've said it I said it way back in the day I've I've not been a massive fan of the dairies anyway there's certainly other vehicles in the game I'd rather pick just because they're more powerful got more add-ons more sort of versatility in the ways you can set them up and everything. But yeah, if I've had to choose between this Derry and the other older one, um, I have always said pretty much I'd go with the older one. Certainly, when the uh, the game first came out, one we didn't have the liftable axles, so that other Derry just had the axle permanently down and in the way. Um, and it also, since then, they've put diffs always on on that uh, other Derry, which just helped it enough to the point, again, it's not very versatile, you can only really put a trailer on it, there's not cranes or anything like that. Or I don't can have sideboard, none of that sort of stuff. But in the right mission, it got its foot down a little bit. Seemed to suffer a little bit more in the second half of that mission. But yeah, I've still sort of said that I'd take that derry over this one. And uh, yeah, I think this is still the case. And then that new derry, I'm sort of... I've not used it a lot really, to be fair. Yeah, just because it's too slow. If I get a bit of a shorter mission... Problem is, a shorter mission just feels like overkill than taking that um, Derry like that. For example, I think at one point I've got to rescue like a Scout 800 and deliver that back or there's little missions like that but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of truck to be taken out just for recovering a Scout 800 and again because it's pretty slow I can still do it much quicker in like Dolphin or something that's got a bit more oomph to it. We actually made it through that last little mud patch without it kicking me out of high gear but yeah, <laughs> you can see in this water it really it doesn't like it for long. Another glitch. I should get about a whole truck length, but I got sort of beached on this rock. Which to be fair, considering my wheels are on it, and alright, it's not a tiny rock, the loaf would fly over that for fun though. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that I got beached enough to get stopped. And I mean, once you're on this sort of terrain, yeah, the having the off-road gearbox would be better really, because at this point I'd just give up trying with the high gear, <laughs> stick it low range, high low, put the diffs on. I mean maybe that's another thing that would probably help if they just added diffs permanently on on this thing. Because like I say, once it's sending the power to eight wheels, it's splitting all the power up. Um, at least if they're coordinated, like you can see there, the front axle's spinning quicker than the rear one was, then back to the front. It's, uh, yeah, at least if diffs are always on it, it'd sort of force all the tyres to go a constant speed and hopefully in that case then like maintain the bit of power they each get. I mean it's quite nice that this is an eight wheeled truck but it's almost one of them. It'd be interesting to see if you could delete one of the axles and have it as a six wheeled truck. See if that helps the uh, power situation going on. I mean I could take it out of all wheel drive as well but I'm assuming that would disconnect the front axle and send all the power to the rears but rarely ever works out in this game really. There's one or two exceptions that can handle sort of not having all wheel drive and they still work fairly decently. Yeah, you can see there, once I scavenged those materials, the uh, the warehouse kind of vanished. The old loaf, he's off. <laughs> Again, I don't know why the game makes stuff slide around a bit between... I don't know, just when it's sitting there, but it was going to happen at some point. He was shocked shocked at seeing the warehouse disappear and then yeah I tried to drop the hammer at this point it soon ran out of juice so I kind of figured that would be a good point to save the footage but, I mean this video ended up 
say yeah, 23 and a half minutes. I think this mission gets done in about 22-ish. Say 21, because I probably talked for like the first minute of the video. Um, I don't know if I brought something. I mean, even like that new, uh, yeah, either Tiger really. In fact, probably the Vorons, uh, the Dolphin. I reckon they could have done this mission probably nearer 15 minutes. And going through this cut through, just absolutely like. I think now, yeah, look, I'm driving, I'm in first gear in auto, and it ran out of power. And I'm not, not really much of a hill going on, the tyres sank in a bit, but... I mean, these cut-throughs are a little bit awkward, but I drove through... I drove through a few of them now. I did one the other day um, when I did the burnt logs mission. Uh, I went through like a little cut through like this with the Tagers, and even as a road train, I think they were going faster than this thing is through it. Just trying to work out now. I was like, what am I even caught on? I believe if you look under the trailer, there was a tiny little glitch there, but fortunately you can still see it. There's like a rock that sort of was hitting the. Um, lower beams of that step deck trailer and to be fair two or three like flooring it letting off the throttle rolling back and then flooring it again it did eventually knock that rock out of the way I didn't have to uh, resort to the winch but do you see what I mean just constantly watching it like it just feels like an asthmatic truck and yeah it's a shame really because in real life like I said, I've seen plenty of videos on these on YouTube, and they're uh, they're absolute units in real life. And obviously, if they were used in like Iraq and that, they tow tanks around for a living. Which I can't remember what I'm saying. M1 Abrams weighs, but it's got to be like probably 60, 70 tons or something. So the thing's probably holding like 80 tons once you got the trailer and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, in this game. Not so much. I'm still semi convinced. I don't know then. Why would they keep adding Derrids or it's Oshkosh is the brand in real life. Um Yeah, why would they add like a new Derry? They've not really screwed that new Derry over, other than the fact it does feel really slow, but power wise Yeah, I swear well. It has got enough power, it doesn't really stall, but as soon as you hit any rough terrain it goes into that really slow mode. But yeah, as I said, I sort of gut feeling back in the day that possibly they tried to buy the rights to the Oshkosh name and maybe Oshkosh put out like a ridiculous price to have the rights to the name, so possibly they made uh, you know, basically the vehicles but just named them Derry instead of uh, having the branding and then kind of purposely made them a bit crap. But then yeah, at that point you'd think they wouldn't really bother adding another dairy. I'm kind of looking forward to these... Is it Kenworth and Mac, I believe, that are getting added at some point? I'm not sure when. They seem to have gone a little bit quiet. Normally when they release a new phase you get a patch about a week or two later and I think normally don't the DLC trucks usually come out at like the same time as the phase releases whereas yeah since they've released this phase there's been no patch or anything like that going on no new DLC truck so I'm not sure if uh, we're gonna get them in this phase or if they're gonna wait now and release them in the next phase which I assume the next phase is gonna be along at some point on like the uh, PTS server for people on PC. See here now as well, going up this hill, bearing in mind I had a nice good run up in high gear. Not only it died in high gear, then I went into auto and it couldn't drive up. <laughs> and then I went into low range with the diffs on and it still wasn't moving. And that just shows you like there really isn't enough power getting to the wheels. Again, apologies for the tiny little glitch there. I basically just kept flooring the throttle and letting it off a bit. I didn't resort to a winch just because I wanted to see if I could even start crawling in the end. But yeah, that's Definitely not great. And 
it wasn't even really beached on it any or anything. It was just, I think, the steepness of the hill, which is not that crazy. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point <laughs> I won't probably be uh, bringing this dairy out for any more missions. So then you finally get a bit of downhill and we hit the next patch. And it managed to get that far, probably barely a truck length for it was about to kick me out. But we're getting there, we're almost there. If I went off to that road up the right, that uh, goes up to that, uh, like, what is it, a mining quarry? Well, it's not a quarry, but some kind of mining place. I believe that's where those eight, eight uh, cargo of gold is. But yeah, the game <laughs> has a habit these days of not, not telling you where various cargo is. And in the end with this game, like, these water towers and all the rest of it, it's, yeah, like, kind of cool or whatever that it, you are able to connect a couple of them, but still does seem pretty pointless. Um, in the scheme of things, they don't really seem to have added many contracts or whatever in this game where you need to go and deliver water. And I kind of think you sort of want to get those missions done pretty quick, because doing the first one at the rail yard, you unlock that, which has unlimited cargo of most things you need on this, not all of it. Um, and then the other water one obviously unlocks those three warehouses, one of which are scavenged the metal beams and rolls on this mission. Um, yeah, and after that, I mean, by the time you built these water towers, they they seem uh, pretty sort of redundant by now. And yeah, I, was, uh, I could have looped around in the yard the proper way. <laughs> I was like, fuck that. This truck's in driving me mad how slow it's going. drop it all off. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is water boom 2, and you can see the pipe running off to the left. So, I had to go and test it. You get four and a half grand for doing the mission, but yeah, you get to unlock this, which I don't really know what it's useful for. I think in a minute I'll uh, check it out. I'll just kind of waiting. Uh, yeah, water tower. So at the minute it's got none. No water out of three and a half thousand. Obviously I'm not equipped on this truck to uh, collect any water. So I brought this along with some water and look, I went to fill it up here and the menu I ended up filling that bloody Voron up nearby. Didn't give me any water so I drove all the way here and was like, what the hell, where's my water? I know I transferred some kind of water. I had to watch the footage back. So yeah, to recover to the garage, do the same journey again. Um, so now I'm at water boom 1, where I used the old dairy the other day, and I put, I think it was 1,050 litres in. I transferred back over to here with the dairy at water boom 2. And then, yeah, now that's got the water in, so it is. You can transfer water between 1 and 2, and then 3 and 4. Not all of them, but I suppose it'd get a bit confusing if you could. But anyway, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf and I'll be back soon.